Hi, I'm Tim. Join me in this video as we discuss the 1912 Blackburn monoplane, a British airplane designed, built, and flown in 1912. I'll discuss a brief history of the Blackburn, go over my RC model design of it, give you a complete set of CAD plans and construction article, and show you some flight videos. Let's get to it. The Blackburn monoplane was a, <clears throat> they only built a couple of them. It was uh, built and designed in 1912 in the UK and was really a quite interesting airplane. Here's my model of it. It looks very much like an airplane you see on the ramp today. Normal nose moments, generous wing, tail areas. And it turns out that it makes a very attractive RC model. In this video, we'll go over the history of the Blackburn. I'll have some pictures of the real thing. The real thing, there's still a few flying examples out there. I'll discuss uh, this RC model, the design process. I'll give you a complete set of CAD plans you can copy off the um, internet. I will give you seven pages of building instructions and finally some flight videos of this aircraft. My model of the Blackburn was originally published in the October 2010 issue of Quiet and Electric Flight International magazine, <clears throat> a model magazine that's now out of business sadly, but it was from the UK. And what had happened in this um, issue was they had a good article on the construction. This entire article is at the end of this video if you wish to copy it and uh, print it out with construction photos that will appear in the video. And again, it made for a very pleasing model. And what Quiet Electric Flight did at the time, they would offer uh, free full-size plans that will pull out of the magazine. What I'll do now is I'll show you the plans that I drew with TurboCAD. They'll be on two uh, screens, <clears throat> five seconds each for the screen. You can easily freeze it, do a screen capture of the plans, print it out, enlarge it at a FedEx store with one of their enlarging scanners, and you'll have a full set of plans of the Blackburn for yourself. So now let's take a few pictures of the Blackburn, both pictures taken um, literally 110 years ago, some more recently of flying versions to discuss the full-scale Blackburn. This is a restored full-scale Blackburn on the ramp. You can see it has very pleasing lines for a RC model airplane. It's not a particularly big airplane. Note the lack of ailerons here as the airplane used wing warping for banking control. Nice view of the rotary engine. The cowl is pretty much to keep the spray from the pilot in the cockpit. Not a big airplane you can see on the flight shot, flown on calm wind days only. And here's a very nice view of a smooth touchdown on a grass field of the Blackburn. So this is my model of the Blackburn. It's got a 46 inch wingspan, it's 37 inches long. It's a quite lightweight model. The model weighs 12 and a half ounces uh, with the battery. What you'll find is with the early uh, airplanes that flew, the key to successful flight were the motors, uh, just they didn't have lightweight, powerful motors. People were flying gliders quite successfully from 1885 on, to include the, White, the Wright brothers. But what led to the Wright brothers' success with their flight in 1903, <clears throat> they had a very specialized design effort to make a lightweight, powerful motor that made their glider essentially fly. So what that means for us and for the models, you can see the Blackburn has an extremely generous wing area because it had a 50 horsepower rotary engine, which is not too much power. This translates into the model. You'll see from the flight videos, it, the takeoff run of the model is about a foot because there's just so much lift generated by the wing and the engine. Also with a control surface throw, it's plus or minus 30 degrees for the elevator and rudder. You need that amount of throw just to kind of push it around the air with a prop blast, but it makes for a very pleasing flight. You'll see in the flight videos at the end of this <coughs> discussion, the plane I was flying with about an 8 to 10 knot headwind, it literally hovered in place and almost landed vertically because of the wind. So the plane is not hard to build. Uh, I would say one of the important things is because it is a lightweight structure, it's difficult to figure out how to build it to make the landing gear and the motor and the servos be on a strong thing. What I did was, you'll see on the plans, I'll set, put a picture up towards the top, is there is a plywood crutch that goes literally from where the engine is here back to this end and on that plywood plate the landing gear is mounted, the engine firewall is mounted, 
and the wing mounting bolts are all mounted on this plywood plate that provides a very strong rigid structure. Then the rest of the model, the F fuselage that doesn't have to be that strong, is connected to the plate. You can see the very back of the plate where the servos are put in, and then that is the key to make the model uh, effective and strong for, for, for that. The wing is held in place with balsa dowels. You have to make a balsa dowels, it's hard to get them. You can see them underneath here. What I did was I took one quarter inch square balsa and literally sanded it to a round shape for the spars for the aft and forward spar. In towards where they uh, are for the fuselage to reinforce the balsa, I spliced in one sixteenth inch plywood to give it some rigidity. So those are the wings. And what happens, you just see it poking out here, there's a little metal tube that's one quarter inch in diameter that is glued to that plywood plate that the wing dial is just insert on, so you can remove the wings if you want for transportation. Because it's a lightweight model, the landing gear is quite easy to make. It's just music wire, one sixteenth inch music wire with decorative wood. And the tail surfaces, you'll notice, are just covered on one side to save a little bit of weight, just with balsa outlining them. The covering, I use a SIG light span covering uh, that they use on their Pioneers of Flight magazine, the Damozelle, the Duffer Dustin, etc. It's an iron on covering. You have to apply a, a sticky material, Stick-X from SIG, there's a couple out there, that when you put the light span covering on and apply heat, it doesn't shrink all that much, but it activates the adhesive and it sticks on quite well. The very important point is the light span covering doesn't shrink a lot. If you try to use monocoat or any of the iron-on coverings, they shrink a lot. It almost guarantees that it'll warp the wing and you'll not be able to get that warp out for the flight. For the standard things, uh, you can, you've seen previously, there are two servos. There's a three-channel model, rudder, elevator, and throttle. The speed control is in here. Uh, the battery goes in, in this place with the receiver. And then just, you pick a, a suitable electric motor that would power a model 12 ounces in weight and you'll be fine for that. So again, it's really not that hard to build. You come up with a very pleasing model. All the building instructions are included at the end of this video. And um, just a little bit of attention to detail and you'll have an attractive, uh, well-flying RC, semi-scale RC model airplane. Just one thing I'd like to mention with the flying wires, these are decorative flying wires. They are not needed for the strength of the airplane. And what I used was metallic beading thread that I got at Walmart. And so I'll put a video card up here. These swage braces that I got at Walmart with the beading wire are a very easy way to make these wires. They're, they're um, strong, they look realistic, and they're decorative on the top. There's just a hole that goes through the wing, and then they go out to the bottom like this to attack the landing gear. Again, the wing is strong enough to the lightweight of the model, 12 ounces, where they don't really apply any strength, but I think they look good and they're quite easy to uh, apply for this model or any other model you may build. Okay, so we've gone over the model. Uh, you have a good idea, um, the design thoughts and, and how to build it. Uh, let's go out to the flying field. The model flies very well. It's lightweight. The incidence of the wing, the size of the wing, it just handles extremely well. As I mentioned, you need full control authority, about 30 degrees um, for the rudder and elevator. At the end of the flight video, I'll show you a demonstration of how far those uh, flight control surfaces move. The uh, thing about the model is you'll have plenty of power because it's so lightweight. I recommend flying it in calm wind conditions. The flight video you'll see, it probably was about eight to 10 knots wind, which is the upper limit of the wind. I've, I've flown the model, I'm, I'm used to it, but for a first flight in that amount of wind, it might not be a good idea. <clears throat> it does fly indoors if you have a large enough venue, but outside, um, calm winds, morning, evening, whenever you have calm winds. And what you wanna do is just, you, you'll, the, the model flies slowly, you'll be able to literally watch it fly as it flies. So if it looks like it's getting a little bit slow, lower the nose and add power as you normally would do. And don't be afraid to use full control authority to get it moving around. I think it's about impossible to stall the model. I don't know what the aeronautical stall speed is. It's very low because with the large wing and the camber of the wing, when you add thrust, it generates lift very quickly and you can get out of most situations assuming you have enough control um, authority. So again, it's a fun model to build. I would encourage you to take a look at it. So let's watch the flight video now. There should be a short post-flight discussion and I wish you the best of luck.
So just back from our, our flight with the Blackburn, and it, the plane flies really well, but you can see from the videos, there's a fair amount of wind here. I'd say probably five, maybe up to eight knots of wind, which normally is not anything, but for this model, which is essentially a flying kite, it means a lot. So what that means is you've got to understand airspeed, ground speed, all that stuff. Fly into the wind, it, it flies so slow, you can actually almost hover to a landing. But one other thing I want to point out, it's characteristic of these designs. If you, if you do decide to build this model, look at the elevator. It goes up and down a lot, as does the rudder. They're large control surfaces. You need that amount of throw because the plane is so slow and just so big, you've just got to push it around to those control surfaces. So keep that in mind if you decide to build your own. And you can see the um, servos are very easy outside. You can see how they go in just it's an easy mounting with push rods to the controls and then you motor and all that other stuff.